What's going on guys? Welcome to a new video where today we are talking about the iPhone 12 Pro Max. More specifically, the official review of the iPhone 12 Pro Max. I have a lot to say about this device, so let's just get started. So to get started, I wanted to talk about the ecosystem. Something I've kind of struggled with over the past couple of years, you know, just kind of justifying what Apple does in their ecosystem and, you know, just kind of how all the pieces put together. Uh, simply put, if you have an Apple device already in your ecosystem, like a iPad or a Mac, buying an iPhone is almost a logical choice and something I actually found really valuable uh, when I made my purchase for the iPhone 12 Pro Max. Now, I'll talk about the specifics of why I chose the 12 Pro Max in a little bit, but simply put, if you have a an existing Apple device, whether it is a iPad, whether it is a Mac, you know, of any kind, purchasing an iPhone makes sense because there are a bunch of advantages and uh, kind of in Apple's ecosystem that totally makes sense if you have one of those devices, starting with handoff, iMessage, FaceTime. iMessage is probably the most important thing to me because being able to stay in touch with people that I know and love is obviously the most important thing. And being able to kind of take advantage of that on multiple devices really makes it uh, a useful feature. And that's kind of where handoff comes in. Handoff is basically a feature that allows you to synchronize everything that you are doing and use it across multiple devices. Now, there is a big caveat to handoff. Uh, the apps that you use have to support it. And if you are using Apple specific apps, uh, you are limited to those Apple specific app. apps like Chrome, and you know other apps like Microsoft 365 uh, also take advantage of kind of like handoff-like functionality, but it's not officially sanctioned functionality from Apple. It's uh, their own ecosystem with their own syncing technologies. Having the ability to kind of pick up where you left off is really nice. Now, I don't use Safari specifically, but if you use Safari, you can pick up where you left off on your Mac, for example, or on your iPad. So if you're surfing the web, and you want to transition to one of those other devices, you'll be able to pick up where you left off from that device that you put down. The other part of this uh, kind of ecosystem equation is the App Store. And I mentioned this in the written review. The App Store is a really great place to get quality applications. But we're in a situation right now, there is a lawsuit that is going on between Epic Games and Apple, which may or may not change the aspects of how the uh, ecosystem equation is going to work in the future. But right now, you have the ability to get apps from the App Store and apps that are specifically sanctioned by the App Store, you are able to download and use so long as Apple continues to authorize and sign those particular applications. There are pluses and negatives when it comes to the App Store. So if Apple decides that an app no longer meets their store requirements, they have the right to kind of pull it as Google would in the Google Play Store. But there are a couple of examples where Apple has allowed an app to exist in the App Store and the Apple ecosystem. And then later on, Apple has come around and kind of stolen that functionality and baked it into iOS, iPadOS, and other their other existing product lines. It kind of makes Apple look like a monopoly. But again, if you are in the Apple ecosystem, 
That is the only way you can get applications on your iPhone or your iPad. Apple does not give you the ability to have a third party within your app because Apple wants to take a 30% cut or a variation thereof of every transaction that goes on within the app store. Now, with all of that said, the whole ecosystem idea is fantastic when it actually works, but when it doesn't, it is an absolute nightmare for people who actually rely on these services. I wanted to kind of step aside from the app store and ecosystem and kind of talk about the qualities of the device. And starting with the display, I'm kind of confl conflicted on this. And I've mentioned this in my written review. You can check it out on my website. I'll provide links to it in the description if you are interested in doing so. But long story short, I feel that the iPhone's display is kind of strange. And I kind of noticed this with the iPad and I thought this was an issue unique, unique to the iPad. And I'm kind of finding out that it's, you know, Apple's displays in general. Now, Apple, the iPhone 12 Pro Max and iPhone 12 lineup in general is P3 color accurate. It is HDR certified, HLG, HDR10. I'll get to that in just a minute. So it takes advantage of high dynamic range, but I feel that the colors outside of HDR are kind of muted. And I don't know if it's based off of the color calibrations that they did on the device itself, or if it's just, you know, the way the displays are. And I find it kind of troubling. I, I'm, I'm not a fan of the colors, but it's something I've kind of adapted to. I don't really notice it when I'm using apps or surfing the internet or watching videos, but when I am on the home screen, that's where I notice a lot of the weirdness in the colors. And, you know, it is what it is. Uh, I'm not really gonna complain too much about it because there are a lot of great aspects to the iPhone 12. We're gonna move on to the performance and battery. And I've said this before, and I'm gonna say this again, Apple has probably the best silicon when it comes to mobile devices and tablets and now, laptops and desktops. And what makes all of this interesting is the fact that every year Apple manages to put out a new generation of processor that builds upon the leaps that they have already made in previous generations. And it leads to some really amazing performance that lasts you more than just a couple years as opposed to what you would get on Android. Now, there are some significant uh, differences between iOS and Android, how they handle system processes. For example, I mentioned in the, re the written review that Android does garbage collection, whereas iOS does not. Um, it does make a huge difference in terms of performance. Uh, iOS specifically, and well, I, I suppose iPadOS would apply to this as well. And I've not noticed any scenario where it managed to come back at the end of the day and the phone actually be dead. I've never actually managed to get it under 50% in a given day because what I do is, you know, watch videos, surf the internet, look at content, you know, whatever. I, I don't do anything performance intensive. I don't do anything battery intensive by any stretch of the imagination, but the test I did manage to put it through, it still handled it without any problems. And I think that's really important for those who are looking to buy an iPhone and keep it for more than just a couple years. And that's ultimately what it came down to with my purchase. And I'll talk about that in just a minute. Talking about cameras, um, cameras are kind of a twofold. For me so I, I decided to split this one up and i'll kind of overlay some photos that i took uh, during the course of my review process uh, the photos that i managed to take actually turned out pretty good 
But I got mixed results because the conditions that I was in while I was outside, while I was taking these photos were not exactly ideal. So it was kind of hit or miss. I found scenarios where autofocus wouldn't necessarily grab the focus in which of the subject in which I was taking a picture of. And I don't know if that's a unique issue. I'm going to have to kind of evaluate that and just kind of test it over the course of the next several months. I'll probably end up doing a follow-up video uh, more specifically about the cameras and kind of some of the things I observed. I experienced quite the opposite when it comes to shooting videos. I'm actually shooting the review for this video on the iPhone 12 Pro Max. And uh, I've run into a scenario where the video performance is actually better than the photo performance. And you know, that could be just a unique issue related to my device, or it could have just been the, the conditions in which I was taking uh, photos and videos when I initially started the review process for this device. But uh in terms of you know p overall picture quality it's about 90 percent uh good and that's a pretty good number for the kind of thing i would expect out of a phone as I mentioned, the videos actually turned out a lot better than I was expecting it to. I did notice, and you'll kind of see this when I overlay the video, um, that uh, there was kind of like a skipped frame moment in some of the videos that I was shooting. And I think a lot of that had to do with the fact that I was shooting in 30 frames per second versus 60 frames per second, because you know no one shoots in 60 frames per second unless you're trying to do some sort of slow-mo thing or whatever. In any case, I've kind of noticed, and, and I noticed this also on the Pixel 3 XL, I think it's just, it's not an issue unique to any particular device. I think it is honestly the limitations in, in which I was, the environment that I was shooting in. I was moving the camera probably faster than I should have, and I just kind of noticed a little bit of artifacting. Otherwise, the images that can't, image quality, picture quality, whatever you want to call it, uh, that came out of the phone was actually really good. And I, everybody has said this, the video quality that comes out of the iPhone it is fantastic. And I, I strongly agree with that. But lo and behold, the mic quality was actually pretty good too. And that's, you know, something a lot of phones struggle with. Uh, some manufacturers can't seem to get the mic quality part down um, all that well. With all of that said, my, the bottom line is this. If you are willing to spend the money on an iPhone 12 Pro Max, the more power to you. The problem is it is a very expensive phone. If you are looking to save a buck, you could probably get away with the iPhone 12 Pro or the iPhone 12 nothing. If you're a person like me who needs a bigger screen so that you know, you could see the contents on your display. That's one thing. But if you are buying it just to buy it, I, I don't really recommend it because you shouldn't be wasting money. Bottom line is this. The iPhone 12 Pro Max is great for just about everything in terms of battery life, performance, cameras. You know, display is not too bad. And I'm thoroughly happy with it. But if you don't need to spend the money, don't spend the extra money. Get the best phone you can possibly afford and enjoy the hell out of it. Anyway, that's really all I have. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. That's really all I have for today, folks. I will see you guys next time.